Hi, welcome along to a little video on understanding light. Looks like the same picture as before, but unlike the last video, which is on the wave model of light, we're now looking at the photon or particle model of light. So photons are particles of light um, or little tiny packets of light energy. And the, it, the concept applies across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So in this image, the, the photon model of light at the moment for you doesn't work quite as well. But what we're saying is that white light is a mixture of kind of photons of all colours. And then they go through the prism and the, and the red photons are separated uh, from the blue photons. So is there a difference in the photons? Uh, it turns out, yes, there is. Red photons have less energy. And blue photons have more energy. We can kind of consider the wider electromagnetic spectrum. And there's a there's a rough correlation which says that the more energy photons tend to be more dangerous. So if I kind of start writing out the spectrum here and I say gamma rays and X-rays, you'll be thinking, yeah, yeah, I've heard that an X-ray in hospital can be harmful heard gamma rays from a nuclear reactor could be harmful. That's because they're really high energy photons and they can d d damage the cells in our body. You might hear, have heard of ultraviolet light and the, the, the risks to skin cancer. And again, that's because an ultraviolet photon has got enough energy to really disrupt the genetic material in, inside your cells. But when you get over to visible light, we're talking generally less dangerous, infrared, uh, and then radio and microwaves, these are all very, very low energy photons. If there's a huge amount of energy transferred, if there's enough photons together, then we can get damage. You can burn yourself off, off infrared radiation. But it's not like the individual damage caused by individual fo um, photons at this end of the spectrum. So we get our colour across the spectrum by the energy of the photons, and that you know, it takes a little bit of getting our head round. What's easier, I think... If we go back to, like in the last video, we've got our little feeble torch. We've got a really, really, really bright torch. OK, this is many photons per second. So in the photon model of light, what we're dealing with is ha just how many photons per second are leaving the torch. And this is less photons a second there's a few bits of math that you need to know about but bizarrely we're still going to be using c equals f lambda i'm not going to go through that again i went through that in the last video we've got a new one how much energy does a photon have and we use this equation e is equal to hf and that gives us a, a constant that you've probably not come across before let's just go through these frequency is in hertz this is the energy of a photon, and that energy um, is in joules. And then we've got this new thing here, which is called Planck's constant. And it's actually quite an important number, very small number. So here's the data sheet. And if you notice, um, if you wanted to get the spelling properly, P-L-A-N-C-K, H, and it's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So you can have this in the exam uh, or, or some equivalent um, when we get there. So you don't need to know that number. You just need to know where it is. Um, and it is a very, very small number, isn't it? 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So let's do what we did last time. Let's say start with light of 500 nanometers. What I worked out in the last video was that has a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So how much energy has a photon of light of this wavelength got or frequency? So we do E equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 6 times 10 to the 14. Um, here's the calculator. 6.63x minus 34 times 6x14. 
and you get 3.978 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Obviously, an individual photon at this point has only got a, a really tiny amount of energy, and I think we're going to write, round that to, to that. We'll talk more about significant figures and rounding on another occasion. Um, that does leave kind of one question that's worth tackling. I, I did this in two steps. I went, I, and, you, and you're free to do this for the moment. I converted a wavelength into a frequency with that equation. And then I converted a frequency into an energy with that equation. But we'll just have a quick go and see if we can um, have a look at another way of doing that. So we've got C equals f lambda and we've got e is equal to hf can you have a go using some algebra pause the video have a play around with this can you write me an equation for energy that doesn't include frequency but instead require re, is replaced by c and lambda so pause the video so you can do that do you get anywhere with it let's have a go f is equal to c over lambda because if I divide both sides by lambda that cancels f equals c over lambda I can replace that f by c lambda and you get e is equal to h c over lambda a really useful result turns out it's so useful actually that in this case it is on the data sheet so if you're given a weight if you're given a wavelength you're asked for an energy, you don't have to do it in two steps. You can just go straight through with that equation. 